Can we give God praise in the house tonight? God is worthy to be praised and Amen. given praise and glory. Amen. Um, I want to uh, give honor to each of you in your respective places. Amen. God is good. Yeah. We thank yeah. him for being all who he time. is to us. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, all the ways he make for us oh, and all the doors yeah. he opens. Yeah. 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 We just Lord. thank him for being God. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Glory Amen. I'm going to jump right into the lesson because we got a uh, we got a good ways to go um, and I want to um, cover as much as we can tonight I'm going to start a series and um, if you don't know what a series is it's just where we do a continual um, thing of lessons mm -hmm. and I want to start a series tonight I know next Wednesday we'll be in our district conference so we uh, we won't be here but I do want to go ahead and start this series. Amen? Amen. 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 So tonight I want to start the series on identifying spirits. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I can smell it. Identifying spirits. So what do you think this uh, lesson or these lessons will consist of by looking at the topic identifying spirits. First, acknowledging what a spirit is. Acknowledging what a spirit is. What a spirit is. Discerning the spirit. Discerning the spirit. Being able to uh, discern which spirit. Okay. Different types of spirits. Different types. That's what you said. Okay. Different types. How to navigate through them, what to do with them. Okay. Be able to realize what the spirit is. Okay. Been able to realize what spirit is or what spirit it is. All right. And you said all of the above, or you took the cheap answer. <laughs> all right. So all of the answers that you all gave, as Mother Jackson said, all of the above. Um, that is that is all of what all of you said is correct. The first basic rule of any type of warfare, whether it be spiritual warfare or natural warfare, is to know your enemy, okay? Know your enemy, all right? Um, as I told you all, if you don't know, it'll be good to take notes during this series because I'm going to be expecting you to be able to uh, know your stuff, all right? Know your enemy. You got to know your enemy. You can't fight something or somebody that you don't know. Amen. You can't fight. How are you going to fight an enemy that you don't know? Okay. okay. I, I think um, I think there may be some notebooks or some extra notebooks and stuff back there in the back if you would check any one of those totes y'all just <laughs> stacked up for me. Um, know your enemy. You got to know. You got to know your enemy. In order to win the fight, you got to know who you're fighting against. Amen. That's simple. In order, I would say that with me. In order, in order to, win win the fight, to win the fight, I must know, I must know who, who or, what or what I'm fighting. I'm fighting. Just that simple. In order to win the fight, you must know who or what you're fighting. Any questions, comments? So the first rule to any type of warfare, whether it be spiritual or natural, is to know your enemy. You can't go to war and fight if you don't know what you're fighting against. Whether that be in the natural, how can you go to battle and fight and you don't even know your opponent? Whether it be... So in other words, you think you've been fighting the That could very well be true. If you don't know your enemy, you could be fighting something instead of fighting someone. Or you could be fighting someone instead of fighting something. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. You need a scripture, which is what I was going to look for before I started talking. Mother ended a prayer uh, right before I found it. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right. But against principalities. 
What did it say before that? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God through pulling down the strongholds. Then he goes on to say in, in another part is that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against and spiritual wickedness and high places and all these things. If you're fighting flesh and blood, which is somebody and is spiritual, you're never going to win. And on the flip side of that, if you're fighting something spiritual and it's flesh and blood that you need to be fighting, you're never going to win. You got to know. The first step to warfare is knowing your enemy. Right, right. And I see nobody from my intercessory team in here. Know your enemy. You can't win. I, I, this is really the you, we got to understand this as the base of this lesson in order for us to understand the next four or five or six or seven or eight weeks that we're going to be dealing with this. Before I can classify the different types of spirits, I first got to know, understand that I got to know my enemy. What did I tell you? I've told you all before. Before you believe God for something, What's the first thing you should do? Pray. Pray. Add what y'all putting. Add. Ask Ask you what you should be praying for. Y'all, 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 it's y'all putting it together. Y'all working together. Teamwork makes the dream work. So I gotta ask God, God, what is your will concerning this? What before I, I believe God for a car, God, is it your desire for me to get a car, or is it your desire for me to get a van, or is it your desire for me to get a truck, or is it your desire for me to get a bicycle? <laughs> or is it your desire for me not to have a car right now? Maybe I don't need a car right now. So I first got to consult God. God, what is your will concerning this? Uh -huh. What was I going with that? Don't freak me out. Why? <laughs> so, okay. So the same thing with identifying spirits. Before I can cast the devil out, before I can do any of these things, I first got to know. Same way with identifying. Is this natural or is it spiritual? Because if I'm trying to fight something natural that's spiritual, I'm not going to win. Mm -hmm. You're not going to win. Everything that's happening is not always natural. Yeah. Yeah. And everything that's happening not is not always spiritual. And a lot of times we waste time because we haven't identified whether it's natural mm -hmm. or spiritual. Yeah. Questions or comments? Yeah. We got that part? Very good. So explain this. Okay. Which part? What I just said? Yes, I can go <laughs> If Sister Margaret is cursing you out and calling you all kind of names, for you to punch Sister Margaret in her mouth mm -hmm. is not going to cause Sister Margaret not to curse you and call you names a week later. If Sister Margaret is dealing with something deeper than Sister Margaret. Mm -hmm. You can whoop a child all night, but if a child is dealing with something that's not natural, your beating them is not going to change them. Not one bit. It's not going to change them. I beat this child sit out. The more I beat them, the worse they get. <laughs> you got to know your enemy. Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to fight flesh and blood, which is they're behind, but that's not. That's not the enemy. Right. That, did I break that down? That's now spiritual. That was natural, but it didn't fix it because it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's right. You need paper. Uh, Brother Archie found some paper. Thank God for. It's some pens. Uh, okay, you got some. I was gonna say some pens back there in the in the filing cabinet as well or on the table. But you got to know your enemy. You got to know your enemy. 
Okay? Knowing the basic function names of demons, and when I say demons, I'm talking about spirits as well. They're interchangeable. Demons slash spirits. All right? We don't get scared of that, do we? Okay? Knowing the basic function names of those of the demons who are out there will give you a good head start as their function names, which would then tell you that they are playing that person alone. Okay. This is why the Bible tells us to always be sober, vigilant, and alert for any kind of demonic activity that could set in on us, or either on us, or any of our close loved ones. You got to be able to identify spirit. Number one, before you can identify them, you got to know them. You can't call my name if you don't know me. Y'all understand that? I got to know my stuff. That's what the Bible says to what? Study. Show yourself approved. Boom. I got to study to show myself approved a worksman under God. Need not be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. Meaning that I got to know my stuff because I'll get there and they'll say, Paul, I know. Hey. <laughs> Jesus, I know. But you don't know your stuff. Uh -huh. We ain't going nowhere. Every spirit don't growl. Every spirit don't have horns on his head. Oh, true. Some spirits sleep in the bed with you. Some spirits walk in work with you. Am I talking good? Amen. Say amen. 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 You make me think you're a spirit. <laughs> you gotta be <laughs> you gotta be able to identify the spirit. Amen. So you gotta know your stuff. That's why it's my job as a leader. How can they hear? And how can he preach? Exactly. It's my job to teach you. Right. Re remember the vision, mission, developing mature disciples? Mm -hmm. That would then in turn add to the number of born again believers. Mm -hmm. For you all that don't know or forgot, that's the mission statement here. So the mission is to mature you so that whatever it takes for you to add to the number of born again believers, because there are some stuff that you have to endure out on the field that's going to require you to know your stuff. So when I see Sister Bella, I realize that it ain't Sister Bella, but it's a spirit that doesn't got on that's attached to Sister Bella. Mm -hmm. So now I don't yell and curse at Sister Bella, but we don't curse because we saints. But I just <laughs> utilize what I have on the inside of me, which is the working of the Holy Ghost, to know how to deal with Sister Bella. Because now I realize what Sister Bella operates and what spirit that is that's on Sister Bella. Right. Mm -hmm. But you can't identify that if you don't know your spirits. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're going with these probably next eight weeks or however long it takes us to get through them. And I'm not going to rush through them. We're going to take our time. Mm -hmm. Because again, as I said, when we come out of this, I want you to know your stuff. So if something start manifesting, you ain't getting your purse getting ready to go. But you can look at it and say, okay, I see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a spirit of pride. Because you know, we name spirits mother all the time. That that and it ain't their name. <laughs> Y'all know? Yeah. We name stuff all the time. Ooh, they just got a shopping demon. A what? Just because they like to shop, that's a shopping demon. No, they may have something else, and shopping is a, a manifestation of that demon. Why do they shop as much as they do? Yeah. <laughs> do you all understand? So that's why it's going to be important for us, because let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, but I'm going to give you something to think about. Because I still don't know. I got my notes, but I don't know what, which one we're going to cover tonight. I ain't got that yet. I'm picking up the, I'm picking up the, the, the crown. 
So let me tell you the spirit that a lot of us, a lot of individuals operate in or is influenced by. Which one? Who you said? It? Spirit of fear. But the thing that, so I guess that's what we're going to deal with tonight. Let's go. Y'all ready? If I take a deep breath, let it out. So the thing about that spirit is, it manifests itself so many different ways. It manifests itself so many different ways. Well, how, Pastor? You tell me. What are some uh, uh, manifestations or attributes, or what are some things that you f you think that this spirit, or uh, how it shows itself? Right. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was it, something else I heard? Okay, so that'll fall on the anxiety. Let's add to this. Depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not quite. That one will go on to another one. That one will go on. That one will go on to another one. Phobias. I'm scared of heights. I can't drive on that highway. It's too many. Mm -hmm. I start breathing heavy when I get in tight places or when there's a lot of people. That's a phobia. We call it, oh, that's just in nervous. <laughs> yeah, it's nervous, but it falls under something. Paranoid. That's a part of the uh, anxiety okay. schizophrenic or fear. Okay. Yeah. Y'all getting these down? Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. When I ask y'all too much from now, what are some of the manifestations of this spirit? I want y'all to be able to tell me. Fear of death. I'm not getting no airplane because it might crash. You crash in your car. It's less air, it's less traffic in the air than it is out there on the highway. How many planes do you hear about going down? But how many accidents do you hear about people getting in and killing every day? No, that's right. Fear of death. Huh? You say the plane you're going there's been planes that that crash and they didn't always die. But that's, again, see how we make excuses for the attributes? Mm -hmm. that's, why we, that's why we hold on and, and coddle, and this is just an example, but that's why we coddle a lot of, we thinking, I'm keeping myself level, but you actually, you pet the spirit. Oh, calm down, baby. It's going to be all right. Get your little water. You know, we get water for everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, can't, you can't give the spirit water. Because when they get finished drinking that water, guess what? It's still going to be there. Oh, the next event they go to, they still going to have a fear. They still going to be stressed out. They still going to have anxiety.
It could very well. Very well could have. You know, and that's why I'm against scaring kids. <coughs> shut them in there and cut the light out real fast, shut the door, and they're there screaming and beating against the door. Mm-hmm. You're opening the door. Mm-hmm. Most kids are not scared of the dark unless they have some type of trauma. Mm-hmm. So now, I not only deal with the spirit of fear, but now I have a trust issue mm-hmm. that I pick up. I trusted mama, but mama made me scream because she put me in the room and shut the door. And I thought it was funny, but baby terrified. Mm-hmm. So now anytime the lights go off, baby can't sleep with it, or grown woman can't sleep with the lights off because it was terrified as a child. And it's, it's hard. So true. That's true, because I was traumatized. I know it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Not saying I'm just being sarcastic. Yeah. And, and we think that it's nothing. <laughs> We think it's nothing until we're fifty and we can't shake it. Oh, it's seeing, seeing stuff when you was a child. Cause we saw a man get killed in front of our door mm, when we sure were did. Uh, small, and that that show stayed with me. So now, yeah, that even that opens the door to a fear of death because I've seen it so close. It happens so fast. Yeah. So now I, I'm I'm ang- or not anxious. I'm I'm skeptical about certain things because it could possibly cause death. But I don't think about it that way. But it opened the door. Mm-hmm. So would all of that possibly be a fear of the unknown? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Officer of faith, no problem. Doubt, nightmares. Yo, that's all. I doubt it. <laughs> I don't think that'll work. I doubt that'll work. Mm-hmm. Would that go into negative? Would that be negativity too? Mm-hmm. Would that be considered like negativity or no? Mm, not necessarily, because <coughs> with doubt, it's the fear that it won't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a fear that it won't work, mm-hmm. even though you. It's shown to you that it has the ability to work, and nothing has given you proper reasoning that it won't work, but you can't shake that. Mm. Well, why you don't think it'll work? I don't know, I just don't think it will. I just got a feeling. No, you got a spirit. And there's a difference. Y'all got this? Well, 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 I ain't done with them. Come back to it. So get ready because we got to deal with the roots and then we got to deal with uh, what we got to do to bind it and then what we got to do to replace it. So we ain't done with it. We just add. So now these are some of the manifestations of that, of that spirit. Spirit of fear. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. So before you move on to something else, I do want to ask. Um, so like you were giving the example of the child being afraid of the dark or whatever. So the child takes on this spirit as, you know, a young age, if it's not handled then, um, one, does it open, does, it, does that spirit grow in other areas? Like as they get older, they're not just scared of the dark, they start to be scared of other things. And then two, does that open the door for other to answer your first question, yes, because even though I use an example of the dark, it it could literally cause it to be fear of anything because it opened the door. So when the spirit come in, it brings all of these things. I can bring whatever I want. Torment, horror. I had a witch to ride me last night. Mm-hmm. 
This is making sense? Yeah. Fear of man. They ain't no, they're not, they ain't. They're not any different than you. But you're about to shake out your boots because they came in the room. Do y'all understand? They're, they're, they're human. Whether it be an interview, whether it be, now, now don't get me wrong, they're may, they're, sometimes you may just, you know, be a little nervous because, you know, I just got to, but to the point that you can't even go complete the interview because you just, you a wreck. For me, I had a, 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 I used to, but I dealt with it. You know, as a therapist, sometimes I have the skills to know how to deal with it myself without having to, you know, but I had to deal with it. I had a phobia or of getting my blood drawn. Watching them stick a needle in my vein to draw blood and seeing the blood go through the, the vi I could not do it. I can't do that. I would literally be almost about to pass out. They would say, let's go, we're gonna get some crackers and some, and some juice, and you sit right here in this room until you gather and then you drive. Yeah, but I told the devil one day, I went there and I said, I'm going to the doctor today and I know I gotta do blood work. And because I know my enemy, remember less. Remember that? That's the biggest thing of, the, of, of this. Because I was able to recognize it wasn't the lady that was sticking me that I had to fight. Mm -mm. Yep. It was the spirit of fear. Right. Because my thing is, there's not going to be anything that's going to cause me to do more than the Holy Ghost caused me to do. I get in his presence and I don't get to sweat and all this. I'm dancing and, and, you know, and stuff like that. But to the point that I'm trembling and 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 almost about to black out because I know you coming to me with the needle to put it in my arm to draw blood. So I had to identify him. Okay, spirit of fear. It's not a scared demon. Oh, you scared demon. You blood demon. No, I knew his name. The attribute, the manifestation was anxiety, phobia, but his name was Spirit of And until you call him by his name, you're not addressing him. Any questions or comments? Y'all understand? You stress demon. That's inaccurate. I bind you, you anxious demon. <laughs> That's not his name. So you're not binding anything. But as I began to speak to the spirit of fear, and I told him, I am not going to be subject to you. I'm not going to be subject to you. God has given me power and dominion. He has not given me the spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, sound mind. And there's not any hate in my heart toward anyone because the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. So you cannot stay here because I have perfect love. Mm -hmm. Now when I have hate in my heart toward someone, I don't have perfect love so he don't have to get out. Are y'all understanding? Mm -hmm. I really just gave y'all a remedy mm -hmm. on how to cast him out. But I began to speak to him and I told him, I recognize you from wherever you come from. I recognize you. And you can't stay here. So I took the steps that needed, and I coached myself through the process. And I told the lady how to do it. Step by step. Mm -hmm. Right now, I need you to do this. I'm doing the process. I'm not telling you how to do your job, but I'm telling you in what phases to do your job because I'm casting out a devil right now. I didn't tell her in those exact words that I was casting on the devil, but I told her I need you to just, just follow my lead. Y'all understand me? Yeah. She went at my tempo, at my pace. And as she went, I began to get speak 
to what I was dealing with. And now, I'm a problem. I said, they want you to do it. But I had to recognize who and what I was fighting. Mm -hmm. She just can't find out. She just can't. Mm -hmm. There's a spirit that has risked on me. Any questions? More comment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe you can help me out with this one, but I sure got a, a fear when it comes to snake hair. <laughs> I, I can't even stand to watch them on TV, on paper, or nothing. You know, I've watched it for years, and so I said one day we was going to get to this conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said, please help me. There is a process that you will go through. Doesn't have to necessarily touch a snake. I've never touched one, don't plan to. Because I don't like them either. I've, I've always prayed and never, not one show up at my house. <laughs> that Shay and the snake don't have it. And <laughs> call me what you want. We just have to be there. Yeah, we're sure the same prayer. <laughs> at whole house. But, at, but the thing that, that you all would have help with is that over you there's small things that you would do to help overcome whatever it is that that has you crippled you may not get to the point where you can touch them and they be your pets no but as she said i can't even look at them she can't she's flipping in a book the book go one way and i'm like okay yeah 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 and so that's that's the thing like there's a process that you go through okay and this is something I'm, I'm bringing counseling into it now. For example, because it may not be snakes for you, but it may be something else that you may that you may deal with that you can't you just can't handle. And so you introduce the fact to how uh, they should give you a good pastor they offer because it would take some good money to pay a counselor to get this information. <laughs> You don't like it, don't you? Don't like it. So the first thing that you would do in this situation is that you would you would look at the word snake. Read the word snake. Sentences that have snake in it. Okay. You would read the word. Read a book that has word snake in it. You could even go as far as reading an article about a snake. This is progress. Do you read articles about snakes? No. See, it's progress. Because the article doesn't get to be, it's words on a, on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. All right? Move from that part. Then, depending on the speed of the, the process, you would then maybe move to, now we're looking at a portion of a snake. May not even be the head, and this is like on a picture. Cut the head and the tail off, and you just look at the middle part of the snake. Because again, you know by looking at it, it's a snake, but you don't see the head, you don't see the tail, you don't see the eyes, the tongue, the teeth. You don't see any of that. You just see the middle part of the snake. Make sense? All right. <laughs> then you move to a picture. You can look at the middle part of the snake and then leave the tail on this time. So I'm, I've graduated, whether it took a week, I looked at the middle part of it every day for a week. I move to looking at the middle and the tail of it. Okay? You hold the picture over there. I don't want the picture in my hand. I'm looking at it from a distance. All right? Hold it over there, but it's progress. Y'all see the, the process? Y'all understand the process? Okay, I ain't say you gotta do it, but I'm just trying to make sure you understand. So then you move from it being at a distance to maybe the next day they walk closer with the picture. So the next day, maybe you have the picture in your hand. Well, Pastor, it's just a piece of paper. I know. But right, the process started out with not even being able to look at the piece of paper. All right? Then we move to adding the rest of the snake at a distance. You got it way over there, the paper with the snake. I can see the picture. It's way over there. Each day you may move closer to the point where now I have a picture of a snake close right here, I can look at it. I may not look at it 10, 15 minutes, but I can look at it, all right? 
as time progresses, you graduate to the point you're able to even look at it for a longer period of time. Then maybe finally you can pick the picture up. Time progresses. I know, that's who's pushing it. They have rubber snakes. It's at a distance. I may have it at a distance. And I'm letting you know, I'm talking to you through the process. I have a rubber snake in my hand. Not that I'm leaving somewhere where you find it. Because this is this causes the anxiety. And it causes the trust issue. And it causes the fear. And all of the horror and all of that. We're not doing that. This is a process. So you're seeing everything. You're part of the process. I, I have a, a rubber snake in my hand. I'm away over here at the door. I got a rubber snake. Can I walk closer? She tell me or he or whoever. Yeah, you can come closer. All right? You see? It's rubber. Can I come a little closer? I'm helping y'all whether you know or not, whether it's about snakes or whatever you may be dealing with. I come closer. All right? It's, it's still rubber. I'm showing you it's rubber. Can I come closer? I'm not going to ever throw it at you because, again, we're, we're, we're cats. We're, we're, this is deliverance. It's, it's, it may be comical, it may be nothing to some, but for some that is operating it, it's delivery. Because now, whereas you couldn't even look at a picture, you got a rubber snake in the same room that you with you that you're looking at. That's that's part of your delivery. Remember how they said sometimes that deliverance don't happen all at once? It's a process. That's that's this. That's this. You know? All right? Yes. Um, would in that case with the fear of snakes, would you go deeper to find out where that originated from? Not just that particular thing, but anything, would you take the time to figure out where it originated from? Or would you just go straight at um, how to uh, manage and or cast out and or uh, move, move forward with that? You always, um, I did that for the sake of time and just oh, going yeah, straight yeah. to how to combat it, but that's a good question. But you would always talk about it. Well, when did you find, when did you realize you were afraid of snakes? I've always been scared of snakes. Okay. Well, were you playing in the yard as a kid one day or as an adult and a snake, you came up upon one that you were not expecting? You know, this is, uh -huh. this is, this is how you do it. Same way, if a person is trying to get off of alcohol, well, when did you first start drinking? All right. What led you to have that first drink? Were you just trying to socially drink and be cool with your friends? Or were you dealing with a bad situation and you didn't know how to handle it and cope with it? So you thought that that would help ease it? What, 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 what was the first drink? Oh, I was in high school and my friends offered me a drink and I just thought, you know, I didn't want them to think I was lame, so I took me a drink. Mm -hmm. And it's 30 years later and you're still taking a drink. <laughs> and those friends are dead and gone. You know? All right? So you always get to the root if there, you know, if there is a thing that caused that. And sometimes it may be subconscious mm -hmm. where you don't even remember it until you start talking about it. Right. Perfect. Yeah, I forgot. Mm -hmm. That happened. Such and such happened. Now, I don't suggest people that don't know how to handle that to open the door to that or if they do lead them to someone that can help them because you can't take her through that process because you don't know how to help because you don't have the tools to cope somebody because you be got hurt <laughs> now, now is it now in the case of this is it times to where there has not been anything that necessarily happened to you to cause a thing, but something that um, was passed down to Very you. good. Okay. Let's go to the next part. All right? The next part. How do I want to word this? All right, so with identifying. Mm -hmm. 
ways in which spirits have access to your life. Ways, y'all ready? Y'all sure? Yeah. All right, let's go. Help us. I'm trying to be free. That's good. We got to be a free church Amen. because we got to be able to help others get free. Amen. I can't be working with you at the altar and you get to dealing with things and I, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm dealing with that same thing. Right. Let me tell you something. Spirit will call you out. Uh-oh. <laughs> and you have, that's another lesson. We can't get into that part. Ways of access. This is how they enter. These are some ways that they enter. Let me add about two more to it, and then we'll talk about it. See, I actually had to take notes for this because I want to make sure I give you everything you need. Y'all getting anything out of this tonight? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, these, these, these upcoming weeks, they're going to get deep. They may be a little slow rolling, but if we, we're going to be helped. All right? All right, let's talk about these three. Ways of access for a spirit to enter. The first one is family background. Everybody say family background. Family, family background. background. One of them is family background. Because no matter where you are, no matter who you are, you have family. Okay, if you claim them or not, they're yours. <laughs> you got family. This is why it's important sometimes to go to your family reunions if you had some, if you had one. Talk to your people about who your family was. Don't deny what they tell you. Don't ignore what they tell you. <coughs> I'm going to stay turned this way so I won't look nobody. Because y'all got texts on me. Everybody. Breathe. Take a deep breath. Intermission. Breathe. Let it out. Let it out. Family background. Who was your grandma? Who was your granddaddy? Where did they come from? What city did they live in? What state are your people originated from? Was there a lot of witchcraft in the area? These things. My family wasn't into witchcraft, that's fine, but if they're from New Orleans, guess what? They were around and in it. They may not have dealt it, but they were around it. And they could have picked up anything. You can pick it up anywhere, but if you're in a city or a place that is housing a lot of it, it's easy to open the door to it if you're not careful. So again, what's your family background? If your spirit is open. If your spirit is open, when you go out of town to Jamaica, I had to make sure the spirit was closed. I had to make sure that the spirit was closed when we went to Jamaica. Make sure that there's no unrepentant sin, that there's no um, um, anything that's any unrepentant anything. Because sin opens the door for the enemy. It gives him legal access. Anytime you sin and you haven't repented yet for it, the door is open for Satan. So now when Sister Mary Clarence over there doing that uh, smoke at her house and she called your name in it, it could possibly attach to you because your spirit is open. Are y'all understanding? Oh, I don't believe in it. You ain't got to believe in it, baby. It'll knock on your door. 
That's why the Bible says you we got to repent quickly. Because if not, it opens the door. You could be in New York. And you can have a sin that's not repented of. And it opens the door to somebody in South Florida that's trying to get you. Well, how in the world does that work, Pastor? Because spirits don't just live in one house. Come on now. But they can be sent to your address. Right. And if the door is open at your house, guess what he gonna do? Come in. Am I making sense? So now you're wondering why you got an infirmity that you can't shake that really ain't real. It's because it was sent to your house. Because there was a door that was open somewhere. Oh my God. But if you don't have what it takes to identify it, if you don't have what it takes to identify it, then you will never realize that Sister Sue, that you took her man down there, is the one that sent it to your house mm. when you sinned and didn't recover up your, you didn't repent of your sin. So now you're trying to go to the doctor and spend all your money, and it's because you had an open door. And now a spirit has attached itself to you because the door was open. Pastor, is it just a saying or is it a truth to when they say the devil is the um, prince of the airwaves? He is. So piggybacking back to um, First Lady, um, the environment, our, our air, we go back to COVID, it was airborne. Um, I recently went to another country and um, I tried to, you know, if, if I wasn't wise or prayed up, I could have fell victim to, well, you know, what they believe in. And I'm like, wait a minute, mm -mm. you know, and then, you, you know, you, you live and learn and be like, wait a minute, they be putting stuff in, they, in, the, in the atmosphere. Oh, Lord, you know, and so again, if, you, if you're not prayed up and if you're not, and if you're just mesmerized, you know, I mean, there were times with the crew that I went to, they wouldn't leave to go out until 10.30 in the evening and be out to 2.30 because they wanted to see what was going on. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm so glad I didn't go because now they're dealing with things, you know, uh, upper respiratory right. situations now, two weeks later, you know, and so it, that's real. And again, I just I wanted to get that clear because I've always heard, you know, the devil is the, you know, the prince of the airways, mm -hmm. you know, but, and I, you know, I believed it, but I was like, I wonder if that, it really has some truth to it, but then when we think about things that in, um, impact us, I told my um, my gospel the other day. I was like, "Man, you live in Arizona for two years. Everybody I know that's from somewhere else that goes there, you automatically get allergies for hay fever." And I'm like, "Because of the the dryness, and I had to, you know, get medicine for that because of the airway." So I just wanted to. Yeah, he is. I preached to you all a couple weeks ago. I'm coming to you. I preached to you all a couple weeks ago because I was losing my thought. It was, I'm trying to make sure. It wasn't Moses. It wasn't Noah. Daniel. Thank you, Lord. Daniel. Is it Daniel? He got old. He felt like the people had forgotten him. And he said, the, I, I, well, he, I heard you the first time. That was the message I, I preached. That was Eli. Mm-hmm. I brought that in, but it was it was Daniel. Okay, I did use that example because he used Samuel used or he thought Eli was calling using the voice, and so Daniel had gotten old, and he said God spoke to him and said, uh, "I heard you, but the prince of Persia." have been praying mm -hmm. and holding up your prayers because mm -hmm. he's the prince of the air oh, gotcha. you pray Thank but you. when he got into the air there's another level up there gotcha. that's why we tell you you can't just pray you got to pray through mm -hmm. can you tell when somebody actually pray through where there may be a, a something resting on the service and I, and I heard it when i was out in february and when and i think you prayed that sunday yeah I heard it online and there was something resting, but you you pray, and, and it's been done before, but you pray, and you you pray, and you didn't stop praying until you prayed through the levels of the air that the enemy was holding up. Very good. 
Oh, I'm going to buy in your service. I'm going to hold up your service because, oh, your pastor, I call him slipping. He ain't there. Mm -hmm. But what he didn't know was I'm not the only one that can pray through. Yes, yes, yes. You may be here trying to hold uh, the prayers and the praises of the saints in this house from reaching heaven, but we got people in place that is able to pray through the devices of the enemy. Yeah. And that's the thing you got to know. He will try to keep you down because he controls the air. That's right. He controls the air. Very good. So that's how you can be over here and something can come over there and, and meet you over there because he controls the air. Mm. What you going to say? I was just going to say that one. Like, great grandma would do go. Yeah. You just have to live to defy the odds or to de live to defy what, what's being said. And this is the thing. The Lord spoke this to me the other night. And he told me to, to tell you all this. Whatever you're doing, don't, and I had to be told this some years ago, don't live it or do it to prove people wrong, but do it because number one is right and because that's what God wants you to do. And that's the perfect example. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them I'm not a root worker. So now you're overcompensating to try to prove to them that you're not what they said you are. That makes sense? Oh, baby, because now you still keep me in your bondage. Because I'm not living for me. I'm living to prove you wrong. Y'all understand that? Which is a spirit of fear. Mm. I'm fearing being rejected or fearing being talked about, so I'm going to try to live under your place to prove you wrong. But no, but that's how you divide that. You just live. Do good. Do what's right. I don't have to go back and show you. You can, you can say what you want to. But I don't have to be there. Fear not being accepted. Yeah. And that is the thing that even with family background, great grandma, like you said, may have been a root worker. Dealt with witchcraft, if you don't know what that means. And now you think that that same spirit, because that's the spirit of divination if you didn't know it, but you think that same spirit won't come down the line? Hmm. Because grandma opened the door to your family. She didn't just open the door to her. She opened it to your whole family. Because the Bible says, what does it say? It says it, uh, it visits the generation that... Thank you. Some stuff you didn't open the door to. Some things, yeah, you may be scared of snakes, but it's a spirit of fear. You may not have opened the door to the spirit of fear. Great, 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 great granddaddy may have opened the door to your family to deal with the spirit of fear. Because you assess it. How many people in my family deal with the spirit of fear? Not saying my personal family, but even mine. But in general, think about some of the stuff that you may have dealt with or deal with. But you're going to be free of because we're going to get free. Hey. Through this, these weeks of dealing with it, we're going to be free. Because you're going to find yourself. Because remember what we said, Mother, deliverance ain't for the unbelievers, it's for who? You can't deliver the devil from the devil if they are believing in the devil. Mm -hmm. So they don't need deliverance. The believers are the ones that need deliverance. So that means we, there's some things that he has an influence on us that we got to be free from. Mm -hmm. Simple as the spirit of fear. Some may say, well, that's simple. Because we don't recognize it. Because, oh, I'm, I'm sanctified. I got the Holy Ghost. Hey. <laughs> but if I toss... Sister Stacy, this mic, she can shake. Mm. <laughs> yeah. She got, I don't doubt she got the Holy Ghost. I've heard her because she got the evidence of speaking in tongues with it. But it, Yay. <laughs> do you all do you all understand? Mm -hmm. And 
And so there are times where the enemy will cripple us because it, we don't even have it on our mind. We don't even think that it's that deep. I ain't got no spirit. Okay. But every time you ask, every time you find yourself in something, you just, I, I just can't seem to do it. Mm. I just can't seem to, to be. I just, something holding. Right. Right. Make sure. The spirit. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. Every time I go to school, I just can't. I want to go and drive there, but I I just, every time I get in the car, I just, I turn around. <laughs> I want to go apply for this job, but I don't think, I just don't have what it takes to get it. That ain't the spirit of fear. That's another spirit. We'll deal with that later. Say amen. 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 The second thing. Negative prenatal influences. Your mama drunk when she was pregnant with you? Your daddy was on drugs? When they was carrying you? When you were conceived? What was it like? Did she sleep with other women or men that wasn't your daddy? Or that she wasn't married to? Were you conceived and they wasn't married? That's fornication. So now, as David said, in sin, did my mother and father conceive me? David was basically saying, I didn't even have a chance with some stuff. Right. I was got here that way. Yeah. And yeah, I saw your hand, I'm coming to you. And yeah, I, for some, oh, well, that ain't nothing. She wasn't married. No, she wasn't. But it opens a door, not only to you, but to what you, what you bring forth. So now when the child gets 10 or 15 and you start noticing certain things, you ain't born like that. Hmm. You open the door to them. Right. As a prenatal influence. Mm -hmm. I heard my grandmother tell uh, us the other Sunday about something that she was just talking to. She said, it start in the womb. Mm. Yep. Literally. Because these are ways of access. Mm -hmm. No, the devil may not have climbed inside of your belly, <laughs> but when you open your heart and your flesh and your spirit up to certain things, it has a negative influence on what you're going to deliver. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Childbirth, like her second child, her second born, and when she had the baby, I can't remember what it's called. It's an old thing. But anyways, the woman she wanted something, so she made a deal with um, the devil, and she's like, okay, you can have my second born child. And when she had that second born child, she gave it up because she had made that deal previously, not thinking nothing of it. Yeah. Mm. You 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 open if not careful, you open the door. Somebody say negative prenatal influences. Negative, negative prenatal influences. You a dopehead just like your dad. There's two things I want to say to that. Number one, that was an influence that the child didn't have a part in. Right. Negative. Second thing is, what does that say for you laying with? <laughs> It didn't just come from nowhere. Somebody say we gotta be free. We gotta, we gotta be, be free. free. No. Three, childhood abuse. And abuse is not just with physical. Right. 
but even how you were spoken to. How did they talk to you when you were a child? Did they leave you at somebody else's house all the time? Did somebody else have to raise you? <laughs> Did they whoop you all the time for nothing? Sure. I'm gonna whoop you, everybody gonna get a whooping. Well, I didn't do anything. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> so there's, that's ways of access. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Yeah. Right. You're talking right. I mean. I'll tell you, we, 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 we going deep, mother. Uh-huh. We're going deep. We're going deep. Because what, again, what we will understand is we are shaped by our family. Right. Sister Stacy, I'm using your name because you looked at me at the time I was going to say Sister Starling here. But <laughs> we thank God for the church. But the church didn't originally shape you. Yo, did. Look, look down the road. She did. Mm -hmm. She had a part in it. Mm -hmm. I don't know your family history, and, and you, you know I. But your family, that's where you got your shaping. Even if they dropped you off at somebody's step, that was a part of your shaping. So guess what? Can I go all the way? Uh -huh. All the way. Okay. All right. We out here. So if they dropped you off at somebody else's house, guess what? They opened the door to the spirit of rejection. Mama don't want me no more. You get 15 years old. Well, why did you leave me over there and never came back? Right. So now you can't love because you're afraid that they're not going to stick around. They don't love me for me. I'm not good enough. Let's go back to this. Did they ever tell you you were good enough? Mm. Because that's a form of abuse. Right. If nobody ever told you. Right, mental. Sure is. Because your family should have told you that you were shaping in his image mm. and in his likeness. My God. You're who God created you to be. <laughs> and the lack thereof is So now I go in the store and wrestle with my clothes, and it really ain't got to do with my clothes. Mm -mm. But it got everything to do. Yeah, got my background. And my teacher. No, yeah. it's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Pastor, I would say as you're talking, all three of those things, um, as I've got, and as I've gotten older, I've been able to, you know identify those like you know you know as I would say for my parents growing up you think your parents are perfect no wrong but as I got older I've been able to look at them as individuals mm -hmm. and I've been able to then identify family background the negative prenatal influences and also the child abuse not just for me but for them as well mm -hmm. and I can you know and I as I as I've got older I've been able to see like oh I've gotten this from my dad oh I've gotten this from my mom and it's just like you know, it. it and th this start this this process started a couple years ago, and it almost took me down because it was like I felt the weight of all of it, mm -hmm. you know. And you know, I really had to be, I really had to pray to God and ask God to, you know, first of all, not judge them, mm -hmm. um, but to help me, uh, help me to be more compassionate, more understanding, and more loving, and then. Now, Lord, that I, that my eyes have been open to this, how do I now, you know, move forward? You know, not and not giving myself excuses to, you know, like one of the things you were saying was drinking. You know, uh, when I was younger, you know, they gave me wine coolers and stuff like that. Just oh, he can get a little taste. But the family background is I have alcoholics on both sides. Mm -hmm. So now here it is. You know, when I get, you know, as I got older, when I get stressed out, when I get this, you know, well, not now. But before, you know, that would be my go-to. Mm -hmm. But then it goes to the negative prenatal. My mom, she didn't drink or smoke or do anything like that when she, you know, she was pregnant with my, but my dad did. He was so it was just like really, you know, as you were saying that, it really was like, oh my gosh, like all of this, you know, make you know, it's making sense. But it's just like 
really understanding, you know, once you realize the access is, how do you move forward? Because it can be, it can be a way. Yeah, I, I, I literally got an answer to a member's question mm -hmm. while you were speaking. I got to call them at some point and share what God just gave me mm -hmm. in that moment. Cause it's gonna answer a lot of things. Amen. Right. It's gonna answer good. a lot of things. Good. Let me answer it here. Oh Jesus. To help some of you. You said something. You said it helped you when you deal with it. Helped you to understand family background, right? Mm -hmm. Help you understand family background. Guess what? Your family didn't start at you. Your family started before you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And as you said, as you were young, we looked at parents as they're perfect. Mm -hmm. Anytime you needed an answer, yeah. did you go to Miss Mott? Just kidding. Mm -hmm. But did you go to Mother Andrews for an answer? No disrespect, no disrespect. I, I hear her say that all the time. But you go to parents. Right. But as I got older, as you said, it opened my eyes to see that my parents are individuals mm -hmm. that deal with things just like me. Mm -hmm. What happens when parent don't tell you you're pretty because parent was never told she or he was pretty? Mm -hmm. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. You're right, mother. Well, mama never told me that I was enough. Her mama never told her she was enough. So mama really don't know how to love you because mama was never really loved. Mama had to grow up fast. Mama had to take care of kids that wasn't hers because Mama was doing other things. Mm -hmm. Are y'all understanding me? Yes, sir. These are opening doors. Mm -hmm. This is how door. It ain't. God bless you. We'll shout on Sunday, but this is what's gonna help us to shout. We can't shout way to down. And these are these are real life things that people don't want to deal with. And we think again, as Mother was saying earlier, to explain a little deeper, we're fighting against flesh and blood, which is cousin. Which is daddy, which is mama, which is aunt, which is grandma, but it ain't that. Mm -hmm. Because of my family background, I ain't got to tell you I love you. You you ought to know by what I do. I provide. Okay. So now, 30 years later, it's hard for me to say I love you because you ought to know I love you. Right. Come yeah. on, man. Well, y'all understand it? Yeah. It opened the door. I love your family. I love my family, but they're not perfect. Yes. Yeah. We got our demons and devils. Mm -hmm. But because nobody want to bring anybody to feel any way, nobody deals with them. We smile at them until it's time for the family reunion. We have a fight in the kitchen, and everybody go home and don't see each other to the next funeral. Mm -hmm. Come on, say amen. 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 Do y'all understand? Mm -hmm. So now... These are ways of access that the that spirits enter our lives. That's right. Family background, negative prenatal influences, childhood abuse. This is just the first three, baby. I got more for you. We just can't get to it tonight. I told you we're gonna walk through this. We ain't running. We're gonna walk through it. And your spirit gonna tell you to come back next Wednesday, even though we got district coming. But after that, your spirit gonna say, I gotta go back to Bible study, because I got to hear some more. I got to get it all. These are ways of access. Questions or comments? Feel free. Yes. So with um, the ways of access and the different spirits, is, is that tied to like the generational curses? Is that the same thing or is that two different, two different aspects of it? Um, same thing and can be a different aspect. Because if your family background is full of generational curses, you need to know that. Right. Yeah. Because the moment you came into this earth and this world with your little cute angelic, angelically looking self, 
Yeah. You came into some generational curses. Yeah. And it's already on your head from birth. Mm -hmm. With your black, smooth, silky hair. Mm -hmm. She looked like she just a little angel. But that child already uh, swinging at me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because she got a curse on her. Uh -huh. right. People before her were abusive uh -huh. or abused. Mama was abused by daddy when child was in the womb. So now the child already come out a fighter because that's what they heard. That's what they grew up in. Even before they were birthed, they grew up in that. So access was already given. Even before the child was born. Any questions or comments? Y'all y'all understand this? Does it make yeah, sense? Yeah. I'm talking all right. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> I just want I want somebody to just let me know. Yeah, you're doing a good I'm job. Mm -hmm. Um I pass the only other thing I would um spread the conversation in is um just like um last week we we learned a little bit about um Judas. Um, I believe that all these characteristics are present in the church today, if not us. Um, and sometimes it hinders us to give God a praise. Or I can't give that praise leader because they hollering at me. And I had to live a whole life of people hollering at me and demanding me to do things. And so, no, I ain't going to um, clap my hands. No, I'm not going to stand up. No, I'm not going to do that because I'm tired of people telling me what to do. And so th this is all in our mindset. And so, you you know, we don't know, like, you know, um, how in all of our different positions, what we've all been through and why I praise the way I praise or why I don't praise when you, when you tell me to praise, you know, because I don't know you, you know. And so um, all that to go back to good lesson. I think this is great, um, great um, fundamental um, teaching moments for all of us to identify because it's either us or somebody we know. That's, right. yeah. That's true. Yeah. And I may not hit you tonight, but I'm coming down. Keep coming down, sir. I'm coming down in the room. I might hit you a couple times. Oh, Lord. That's all right. Because it's just one. We just dealt with one tonight. We dealt with one, and we ain't done with that one. But Because I had to go back. I skipped the ways of access. Because before I can identify them, I now know how to get in. Before you can help somebody be free and, and identify a spirit. Oh, you got a lying spirit. Okay. Well, how did my lying spirit get here? Since you know what I got. Have you talked to them long enough to see where that spirit come from? And it ain't a lying spirit, really. It's a spirit of perversion. Mm. So if you're going to try to call my devil out, call it out by his name. Are oh, y'all understanding? Mm -hmm. So I got to know my enemy. We deal with the spirit of fear. Yeah. But I got to know how it gets in. And these are, like I said, these are just three. Childhood abuse. Did somebody touch you? But they just be walking all over the church switching. Well, did somebody touch them? And you already with your judgmental self done condemned them to hell and you don't know how they got to where they are and what they're trying to deal with. We ain't going to be that church. No, I don't condone sin, but I do help you to get out of what you've been in. You can help at five, mama left you with a babysitter that touched you in places that they shouldn't have. So now, here you are at 20, 30, 40, 50, trying to cope with that because nobody ever stopped to ask you why you doing what you're doing. What's really wrong? Did something happen to you? But no, you fussing me out and condemning me, so of course I'm not going to share with you and tell you what happened to me. Are y'all, is this good? Amen. Is it good? Amen. So as you said, I dealt, not me personally, but childhood abuse. If you dealt with that, to come here, come on and clap your hands and give God praise. You sitting there just looking. See? See? Uh -huh. I get yelled at at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My husband yelled at me. Or when I was five, my daddy yelled at me. For no reason. And now I come to a safe place, mm -hmm. which is a place of worship. And right. because I don't respond like right. you want me right. to, you get upset and fuss me. That's right. 
Sunday, for example. We had all different kinds of people here Sunday. Right? It's Easter. Everybody come to church on Easter. People have never been. It's not my job to fuss at you. I thank God you're here. No, you're not going to run around the church like Sister Barbara because this is your first time being in church in six years. Mm -hmm. I don't expect you to run like Sister Barbara. She come every Sunday, Wednesday, and in between. I use that because she's in there. I don't expect you to play the tambourine and bounce and be energetic like Minister Michael. You just had surgery the other week. <laughs> So now I'm casting judgment because you're sitting there a certain way and I don't even know that you had to press your way to get here. Right. And now you fuss at me for being here because I'm not doing what you think I should be doing. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's the truth. That's the truth. Guilty. Guilty. Y'all just sitting there looking at me. Okay, baby. When you lead God in here, we worship. But right now, you fussing, he ain't here. Mm. Right now, you fussing, you ain't preaching. He ain't here yet. Mm -hmm. I feel abused. Mm. It's a trigger. Yeah. So now the whole message, I don't have nothing to say. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Okay. I've already shut down. You might as well dismiss and go home. Right, right. Because you reminded me of the one that I'm running from. That's why, my brother, we got to be in the spirit at all times. Because it's not about me. It's not about how I feel like you should move. It's not about how I feel like you should worship. Mother K, part of the church mother, she's been saved over 40 years. The 21-year-old that just come off drugs last week ain't going to be as sanctimonious as she is. She's been walking with God a long time. I don't expect them to wear an overlay and have on a, 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 a hat like her at communion. But if I keep working with her, she can grow as mother have grown. Mm -hmm. She can grow as pastor have grown. Because I'm a mature disciple now. That's right. I don't entreat them as immature. I'm mature. They may not be mature, but I am. So how I conduct myself to them is mature because I realize that they're dealing with. They're dealing with. They're dealing with. And now I come to church to deal with the same thing. Because the one that got the microphone the one that's preaching, the one that's singing, the one that's praying, the one that's greeting, the one that's ushering, the one that's on the praise team, the one that's playing the music, the one that's in children's church, the one that's in the office taking up the money. They Because uh, uh, people stole from them, now they want my money and don't know how to ask me for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't tell me what to give in church. You can ask me, you can encourage me, but it ain't yours, it's mine. Right. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's been trying to tell me what to do all my life, not giving me a voice of reason of my own all my life, and now I come to church and what belongs to me, you trying to tell me how to give it, how much of it to give, yeah, I can encourage you for those that would like to join us in giving such and such today. If you don't want to give it, keep your money. That don't mean you're rejecting me. That means you're just not giving it today. So be it. I'm not going to beat you over the head because you're not giving what's asked. Because you're not doing what's asked. Why? Because I'm a mature disciple. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's my job to understand what I'm dealing with. Yeah. What I'm dealing with. They may be sitting today because they don't feel it. Let me watch them a little bit and so let me pray and see what I pick up. Because maybe I can go to them and just lay my hand on them and say, be healed in the name of Jesus. On my way to the altar today. Or the best. Or as I'm passing by to go to the bathroom. I don't have to make a scene. But instead of casting them out and looking at them downward, I say, 
it's going to be all right. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And go on to the bathroom. Instead of addressing the fact that you're looking at me and ain't saying nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Am I talking to you? Mm -hmm. Questions, comments, done. Okay. Questions, comments? I think, uh, Pastor, you were saying, you said a little earlier, um, I think the key factor in, you know, when it comes down to families and also the church is love. Um, and make them that we really have to, you know, that has to be in the forefront um, is love. And like I think you were saying earlier too, in regards to how do you get rid of certain things? How do you block or you know, you know, whatever is having you know love, you know, having love in your heart or have love, loving people? I think that's a, that's a key point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is is that love? Yeah. You, you don't may you may not understand it. You may not you know know all the uh, persons. You know, family background, prenatal history, yeah, yeah. childhood, but love them. Mm -hmm. If they are, you know, doing certain things, if they don't dress like us, like, you know, even on Sundays, you know, whoever's up, you know, like you said, you know, uh, instead of beating them down, you know, just approach whatever you're doing in the spirit of love. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible even talks about, you know, you know, you know, with love and kindness, you know, you know, he'll do the drawing or something like that. So, yeah, you know, with love and kindness, have I drawn them unto me? And, that, and that's the thing. That's the thing. You never, we never know again what people may be dealing with, um, or what spirit may have influence on them. But it's our job to be what it said. We got to be able. The first thing was what identify, know what your know know your enemy. Yeah. Your enemy. When I get up to pray, your body is here. But if, if, if there is a, a heaviness, it ain't your body I'm fighting. I'm fighting in the spiritual world. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm fighting in the spiritual world. I bind Mother Jackson today. <laughs> Mother Jackson is not a spirit, so how are you going to bind her? I can bind the spirit of heaviness, but then the Bible tells me for the spirit of heaviness, I do what? So you up here wasting time trying to bind the devil when you ought to get to wherever you had at your seat and start praising God. And heaviness will live yeah. off of whatever is in the house. Oh. We fighting the wrong way. You looking at me all heavy like God ain't done nothing for you. Okay, so get in your corner and praise God until what's on them break. Because if heaviness is in this house and if you begin to praise God, the Bible says for the spirit of it, put on the garment of praise. If there is heaviness in this house, I get up and I lead the saints into praise. Right. Mm -hmm. Ain't like this. Ain't yeah. like this. Ooh, Pastor, when you just got, I just felt so free. Yeah, because I had to, I had to, I all the time tell you, I, I just had to see where I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other Sunday. I'm done. The other Sunday. When I got up. I know what was here. I know what spirit was here because I'm the shepherd of this house. I identified it. I knew it when I walked in the door. Pulled in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So when I got up, I already knew what I had to do. I got a feeling yes. everything's going to be all right. Uh -huh. And from there, we went straight to preaching. Amen. Yeah. Because what was on us had lifted. You didn't know it, did you? Because I didn't tell you. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my place to tell you. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. I knew what I had to do to shift it. Uh -huh. And it didn't have nothing to tell you. Y'all had me in here today. And I just, I got my, I, I, I walked by the keyboard. I said, I gave him my key. And we went straight there. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you nothing about no heaviness. I didn't tell you nothing about what I felt was going on there. Because it didn't matter. I was the shifter and I knew what it took. So that's what you have to do. That's if right. your road seeming to look down. Start praising God. Start praying. Start doing something. Yeah. And it'll live. Yeah. That's good, Pastor. That's real good. See, the mothers over there sometimes, they be having their own service. They sure do. <laughs> but I know they be helping each other get through whatever That's they right. got going on over That's there. That's right. And you got to start doing that on your road. Yeah. Folks around me, they would just sit here looking. Okay, give them something to look at. 
And if they got, after a while, when you stir up some fire, mother, I owe y'all 10 minutes next Wednesday. We ain't gonna be here next Wednesday, so you got an hour and a half. I, I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. We have more power than we know that we have. That's right. That's right. Everything don't have to be a scene. That's right. If I notice my role look quiet today, I ain't got to. What's wrong with y'all? Body in the name of Jesus, I command everything on this road to praise God. God, let your spirit rest on this road like never before. Move up and down it. You ain't made a scene. You almost felt God, did you? I know. You ain't got to make a scene. You got the power. And after a while, as the service progress, you will see their joy start coming up. You will look down, and the person down the road was you. They, they stand up now. That's progress. Progress. All right, done. One more. Hope I've said something to bless your hearts tonight. Amen. We got to identify spirits. Amen. Know what we're wrestling against. Amen. So that we can be free and help Amen. others to be free. Amen. All right, let's stand. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you for all things. God, we love you. We give you glory. We give you praise tonight for the lesson. God, we thank you that you're causing us to be able to identify spirits in the name of Jesus. God, we praise you. We thank you that you are causing us to be free, delivered in the name of Jesus. We love you and we praise you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. What's up? What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Shala Frank. Come on over and check out our channel, Promo SDK Reality TV, Husband and Wife, where we eat good in the neighborhood. We're a mukbang eating show, cooking and recipes, especially soul food, pranks on Frank, oh y'all go check it out, challenges, vlogs, comedy skits, short videos, and TikTok. So come on and become our oh yeah baby today. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Instagram, promo SDK, promo SDK, or you can also go to any of our social sites and find us under promo STK. Oh yeah, baby. We can't wait to see you. We can't wait to meet you. So come on over.